Hi everyone, it's Crystal with Emerson Aurora Design, and today I'm going to show you how I hand painted the succulent design on a card stock base tumbler. This is a 30 ounce straight skinny from Stainless Steel Depot, and I'm going to place my card stock that I found here at Hobby Lobby, which is so pretty, on my tumbler using the Mod Podge method. I, this is a pre-sanded tumbler, so I didn't even have to sand it. Um, I did wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol. And I'm going to apply a layer of Mod Podge to my tumbler so that I can uh, apply my cardstock. So a nice thin layer of Mod Podge directly on your tumbler. You've seen me do this before, cardstock on a tumbler before. I really do enjoy putting cardstock on my tumblers, um, but you do have to do quite a few layers of Mod Podge to seal that paper in. So I'm just smoothing my cardstock on my tumbler here and cutting off the excess. I'll go back here in a few minutes and trim that off a little bit um, straighter. You don't want to saturate the tumbler with Mod Podge. It's just a thin layer. You can do thin layers so that it doesn't make your paper too wet and uh, squishy. <laughs> and I'm just cutting strips at the bottom and the top and folding these the paper over the excess pieces over and trimming them with my scissors. I'm going to go back in with my a uh, cup edging tool to get a nice straight line on the top and bottom rim. So I'm going to tape off a straight line here with some masking tape. Before you place this onto your cardstock, you do want to kind of take the sticky off a little, otherwise it will peel up your paper. So this is a nice straight line and I'm just going to follow it with a sharp uh, knife tool, uh, exacto knife. You want your uh, exacto knife to be really sharp, but be careful, you don't want to cut yourself. This is my cup edging tool I purchased on Amazon. I can leave a link to this tool in the description box below. And I'm going on the shortest uh, setting here, just to expose a, lot, a straight line of that cardstock um, so that I have a nice straight edge at the top and bottom. So here's where you're going to start sealing in your cardstock. I'm using my Mod Podge paintbrush here and just putting on several layers, thin layers of Mod Podge one at a time, letting them dry completely in between. Make sure you get the edges sealed in nicely because you don't want any epoxy to seep up underneath that cardstock and cause wet spots. So here's some white gloss spray paint I'm going to tape off my top and bottom and um, paint these the stainless. I did not want to spray paint my tumbler prior to putting my my um, cardstock on because I mean you could you could spray paint before but it's just to me a little waste of um, spray paint. I'm just going to get the top and bottom. So I'm making a nice straight edge with my masking tape here and like I said make sure that you take off some of the sticky and I'm just using aluminum foil to mask off the rest of my tumbler. So now that that's spray painted the top and the bottom, and note that I did put about three or four layers of Mod Podge over the cardstock and let that dry in between. And now I'm going to apply some glitter with the Mod Podge. Um, you could do epoxy method if you wanted to, but since I already had the Mod Podge there, I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle my glitter on using Mod Podge. You can use glitter glue, any, any um, normal way you would apply glitter is perfectly fine. You don't have to use Mod Podge. This is just what I chose to do this time. This glitter is a really pretty white sparkle called White Wedding from Glitter Craze. Um, it doesn't have any holographic shift or anything. I just wanted a straight white glitter and that's what this is. And I'm just kind of ombreing this glitter, putting it, covering the bottom of the tumbler and just kind of cascading and ombreing essentially um, from the top of the tumbler down and from the bottom of the tumbler up. I just want a little bit of sparkle, a little bit more sparkle in that um, 
cardstock. You can see me, I'm just picking off little pieces of glitter that contaminate it. So you can see it's kind of got like a cascade look about it. The Mod Podge is still wet, so it is still white. I'm going to go in with this, um, I think it's Bless Your Heart from Glitter Craze. It's pretty opal with a little bit of a hint of pink to it, which is nice because the cardstock has the pink roses. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle with my fingers um, in the center, essentially almost like a burst style tumbler. I just wanted a little bit extra bling there in the center. At this point, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with this tumbler, to be honest. Um, I was just kind of seeing what goes, go with the flow. So that's dry. I did apply a layer of epoxy on that and it has cured so it's probably been a day or two later. You can see how pretty that cardstock is with the glitter. And this is where I decided to do a hand painted design on my tumbler. I'm going to use two different shades of green acryl acrylic paint and white acrylic paint. I like to base paint my flowers and leaves and succulents with white and let that dry before I start painting with my colors. You don't have to do this. Um, it basically will have a nice base for my colors so I don't have to have as many layers of the acrylic paint. But if you have nice thick acrylic paint, go ahead and just go in with your colored paint um, and it would be fine. I just started doing this recently with my hand painted tumblers, um, mapping out a design with the white. I just think that it adds a layer of um, background and it also helps to um, make my colors pop. So this is kind of a loose representation of a succulent, some type of plant. Honestly guys, I don't really know my succulent plants names, but in the end it does look like a succulent to me. So I'm just making kind of leaf shapes and vine shapes. I kind of wanted to make it look like a vine coming down from the top of the tumbler. I don't want to cover up too much of the roses because the cardstock roses are really pretty, just enough to give it a little bit of accent. Really simple shapes here. And of course I dropped my tumbler, so I have to go back in and touch up the spots where the paint smudged because I'm a klutz. I wanted to um, do the same pattern kind of coming from the bottom of the tumbler up also. It needed something else. And I wanted to paint on the bottom too. Don't forget your bottom. Same type of shapes that I'm going with here um, from the bottom up, just to give it a good symmetry. And also it's a way to kind of camouflage that seam. So I'm gonna let this dry. And once it's dry, I will go in with my two different colored greens. So when I'm doing this, I just kind of add two different color greens and kind of swirl them together just for a little bit of extra um, depth, I guess. And I'm just following the same pattern that I did um, with my white paint. If you've never tried a hand-painted tumbler before, give it a try. It is so much easier than you even think. I essentially am just, to me, it's like doodling on my tumbler. You don't have to be a, an amazing artist, and the results are always so eye-catching. And you can see how that green really is popping with the white behind it, and it's much more opaque um, with that white base behind. So just follow the same shapes that you were painting before. And I like the texture that the paint has. I don't go in with thin coats. I go in with a big glop of paint. <laughs> as long as you let that paint dry completely before doing any epoxying over this paint, you'll be just fine. And it does, it just has so much depth to it. 
once this paint is completely dry, I usually let it dry overnight. I am going to put a layer of epoxy over this before we go on to our next step. I love the way the green leaves of the succulent look against that pink, the pink roses of the cardstock. I just think these colors look so pretty together and it just reminds me of a pretty spring garden. So now that she's all epoxied and cured, I'm going to go in with my paint marker. Um, I will link this marker in the description box below. It's from my Amazon, well it's not my Amazon shop, it's from a Amazon shop that I purchased from. And it's just one that I really like. It's a fine tip white acrylic paint marker that really writes nicely. I have tried so many paint markers guys and I knew as soon as I found one that worked well for me I would buy a bunch of them and just keep using them and that's what I've done. It's called Zaret or Zaret, T-Z-A-R-O-O-T, -O -O that's the brand. Um, I'll link it in the description box below. So here I'm just outlining kind of leaf shapes and I wanted to add a little bit of texture to this so I'm just adding kind of squiggly, long squiggly lines here kind of every other leaf. I don't know if there's actually a succulent out there in nature that looks like this, but I really did like the way that these turned out. There's just something about them. It's art, you guys. It's all subjective. Your lines do not have to be straight because it's just an outline of a leaf and a lot most leaves aren't completely straight lined. And make sure when you're doing this that you don't stick your hand in your paint that's wet <laughs> like I do. If you do just take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a paper towel and wipe that line off and redraw it. I'm kind of a messy crafter so I'm always sticking my hand in paint or glitter or gooey mess somewhere. If you're not sure how to draw leaves or flowers, you can always use an inspiration picture. Look online for uh, photos of flowers or leaves. Um, and you can see this mat that is underneath my tumbler, just strawberry mat. I mean, even those could be cute inspiration pics. It's just a little uh, place mat that I thought was cute, but that would make a cute painting on a tumbler too. So each vine I'm kind of doing a little bit differently. This one I'm kind of drawing lines almost in a, not quite a swirl. Um, I'm starting at one side going up to the point of the leaf and then coming down from the point of the leaf to go to the wider side, if that makes any sense. I mean, I guess you can just tell by the way I'm drawing it. But I wanted it to have a little bit different of a texture than the previous one that I did. And on some of the leaves I'm going to leave just outlined. Not every leaf has to have um, veins in it or lines, whatever you want to call them. I really didn't have much of a plan when I was going in with this tumbler. Um, this was kind of a fly by the seat of my pants. I knew I wanted to do the cardstock, and from there, that's all I knew. Um, in the end, I think that this tumbler turned out so beautiful, and I really, really think it's gorgeous. I love the pinks with the green and white. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Sometimes uh, when you're in a creative rut, just kind of throwing some stuff out there turns out to be one of your favorite tumblers and that's kind of where this one went. And I'm really enjoying painting, hand painting tumblers right now. I've been doing quite a few of these. It's just something relaxing, throwing on my favorite music and just getting lost in the artistry of it. 
What are your favorite tumblers that you're working on right now? I love rainbows and sparkle and hand-painted flowers. Those are my favorites right now. Doing the bottom of the tumbler is a little bit tricky. You just want to make sure that you continue your lines over and around the top, the edge, um, and just kind of try to do it in one line if you're able to. But if you're not able to, you know, like I said, this is an abstract drawing, basically. Um, you're not going to, the, the flaws, if there are any, are not going to be glaring. And, you know, if people are going to get their magnifying glass out and stare at your tumbler to see if you have one little mark of a line that didn't line up or something, then, you know, they're in this for the wrong reasons. My biggest challenge is just keeping my hands out of the wet paint. <laughs> I'm sorry this isn't the greatest angle here to see everything. It's kind of hard to make, you know, draw, make sure I'm doing it right, and have the camera where you guys can see it. So I hope you're able to see um, kind of my process and understand what it is that I'm doing here. I hope it's translating okay. Once I'm finished doing my outlines, I will spray this with some clear matte Rust-Oleum spray. I just like to do that just to lock in my my paint. Um, you don't really have to, I guess, but I'm going to because it will just help for many headaches later. There are my outlines. I just think it looks so beautiful. And I am going to place another layer of epoxy on this, clean my rim, and here she is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch. Leave a comment in the uh, drop box below. I love to hear your guys' thoughts on these tumblers. I love to hear your questions and I will get back with you as I can. I hope you guys have a wonderful summer day. Happy crafting everyone and thank you for watching.